Hey, this is a sort of an educational video, I guess, uh, compliments of Mike, and uh, this is the assembly of a 2.12 Tesla turbine uh, designed by ne Nikola Tesla in 1909 and then developed further on in patents. And uh, dates aren't really that important, but it's a hundred years later, and I built this with uh, the CNC water cutting uh, with garnets and was able to... Uh, after many cuts, find a, s a solution in making it assembly uh, foolproof. And I hope that uh, people that have bought them and uh, are planning to buy one, maybe hopefully, will uh, find this interesting and uh, helpful. <coughs> We're going to take our Tesla rotor here, which is a bonded rotor with uh, spacer washers, and on a flat of the shaft, which is cut into the discs of stainless so that the uh, bonding doesn't really hold the discs in place but the flat does and the bonding just adds for sealing the washers in place adds strength as well we slide it into the uh, turbine this way slowly uh, no grease required we want to uh, put our 164th gasket or 132nd depending on what you've done with spacer washers and then we want to assemble the bearing case now the whole pattern is specific so that these plates go together in one order only side to side. They're identical but they face a certain direction only. So you want to make sure that you uh, you can take a marker because there's not much uh, moisture out on this area. Take a marker and mark inside or outside if you want for fast assembly or stamp them if you want but I would keep them flat. <coughs> now we have that in place we're going to add the 1 16th gasket here which is a high heat carbon fiber gasket high strength reusable and then we're going to add our outer output shaft side bearing uh, or cover plate sorry and there you go so now that we have the turbine together and we didn't have to disassemble the uh, Lexan cover here to take it apart we're going to fasten our bolts uh, with the uh, nylock nuts finger tight at first at opposite sides finger tight just to keep the pressure equal to avoid warping the plate we want to make sure all our screws are flush and have their washers in place you could use tape and uh, tape these down if you wanted before taking it apart and then add uh, actually this outer panel would actually add as a screw holder so, finish putting the rest of these screws on quickly while talking. It is quite quick to uh, take apart and put back together, so for the schools that have bought uh, two of them, I think for demonstrations for the students it uh, really aids in that fact and makes teachers look pretty cool if they've practiced once or twice, I guess. And there's that final screw. All stainless steel screws and two brass knurled uh, nuts here at the end, which you can get, I think, at Home Depot. And you could do all of them with that because finger tight is okay as the turbine output allows for any uh, over pressure bleed or anything like that in case the uh, rotor gets fouled. Now, with the rotor, you have to be mindful if you've taken it apart that there's no specks of any material inside at one millimeter or less because if they do come in contact with the rotor and uh, edge of the stator you will have a stall on your uh, rotor and it won't work even under high pressures of steam so <coughs> it is uh, essential that the rotor is not uh, conducting any friction other than on its washers that ride against the bearing race, the inner bearing race on each side with the bearing plates. <coughs> now this is a two into one from a one eighth uh, T-split, brass T-split and what I've done is I've added plugs at each side which you can adjust inwards to constrict the uh, expansion area which is similar to uh, a Deval turbo, uh, a de Laval, uh nozzle but remote from the actual output and uh, with this compression 
it forces the steam to expand and then be recompressed which increases its speed through the tubes towards the uh, discs underneath. So you can actually reduce this area inside here so that the expansion could be experimented with uh, with a large expansion if you're careful with these uh, end plugs that you don't take them out too far. Uh, one thread proud would be too much so they should be flush or less and you can push them in full length and compress this area into the size of a 1 8 diameter to match the 1 8 diameter MPT input that you have here. <coughs> now with these motors or turbines I supply a ball valve and that is sufficient for turning on and off your uh, turbine. Uh, I've developed a, a popper valve uh, device that will actually feed the turbine when the popper valve pops at 75 psi it bleeds into the turbine's input. It's uh, also contained within itself so that that popper valve is now being compressed back into a 1 8 input as it pops on the uh, boiler and then when the uh, popper valve falls below 75 psi uh, or lower it will shut off and then turn on again once 75 psi is achieved again. This way the turbine goes on and off only when the psi of your boiler is on uh, a level that it can turn your alternator or small DC motor or something like that for a trickle charge or better. Uh, I don't have the equipment to test these so I'll be honest about that and I don't even have a CFM gauge so uh, hopefully we'll be able to add that to the uh, shop here and thanks for watching